I've never met a farmer anywhere that's not also an engineer and a mechanic and a scientist. People that don't know farmers don't give them nearly enough credit for, for the things they can do. And, and the moniker of, of farmer is something that, that, that people need to be proud of because it it's, elicits a, you know, an attachment to the land or the ocean, in my case, as a seaweed farmer, as well as you know, the, the innovation and the technical side of it and the science and the get up and go and, and get it done kind of mentality that you need to have to be successful as a farmer. I can't think of a better place to spend time than floating on a boat somewhere. Dada, I'm trying to go to the back to the patrol there with the park. You want to go to the park over there? We're gonna go. We're gonna, first. We're gonna do the, get the crab trap down, and then we're gonna do a bit of sailing. It's almost a spiritual feeling for me. You know, there's not a day goes by that I don't see the ocean, that I don't stop at the beach and see what the weather's doing and 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 smell that breeze. Is that full chicken? It's a whole chicken. We're feeding. The, we're feeding the crabs good today. If we feed them well, they'll feed us well. That's kind of where I draw inspiration, solace. If you know, if I need consolation, that's where I gravitate to. Should I throw it in? Like, if you're ready, if you think this is the spot. Yeah, that's for you. Jake's gonna throw the trap, you throw the float. You got her, pal? Nice. That's fun. Okay, three, two, one, throw it! Yahoo! Nice. All right, we're fishing. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Victoria, and it, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful enclave of coastal living in Canada. You know, the southern end of Vancouver Island, where I live, we're surrounded by water on three sides, and I can hear the seagulls and smell the ocean when I walk out my front door. How old is this stuff now? Um, I think it's about... Two or three weeks? Two or three weeks old. I think it's week two, actually. Are we starting to see signs of reproductive activity on the slides, or yeah. how's it looking? Yeah, there are gametophytes. There are some really nice, thick females and some males there. We can grab one or two of these slides and go pop under the microscope and have a, look at the, have a look at the development. Yeah. One of the things that I was drawn to with seaweed cultivation, it was, it was a unique opportunity to marry my professional expertise as an engineer with my personal passion for, for being on in and around the ocean whenever possible. These are the developing sporophytes right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Every time I see this on the screen, it gets me super excited. Yeah, see there's some more females, developing sporophytes, yeah. but eggs right here that yeah. are about to develop. Yeah, they're looking really awesome, actually. Beautiful. It's so, it's so amazing kind of linking the science to the farming side of, side of things, right? You know, you see that full cycle. Getting to see the development of the final product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It actually all started with a magazine article that I read while sitting in the waiting room of the, of the dentist's office, and it was talking about the untapped opportunity of seaweed cultivation in, in British Columbia, and it just really resonated with me. I started vigorously researching it and kind of going down a rabbit hole. That's when I connected with, with, the, with the team at Cascadia Seaweed, and ultimately ended up joining, joining the team, and I've been with them ever since. Yeah, all good. Uh, we're just a bit heavy, so we couldn't get up one step till on the boat. Joel's going to drive it out. Copy that. We need a bigger boat, guys. <laughs> well, officially my role is Vice President of Operations. We're a small startup and everybody wears a lot of hats. This is, this is ingenious. Yeah, it took a bit of modification. And it just took a bunch of playing around over the weekend to get it all, all right. Love it. We're currently out here seeding on the farm. We typically do this in the fall, kind of November, December timeframe. The seed, we start on spools in our nursery and then we outplant that on the farms. We've got the spools and we're passing our production line through the spool so that the twine wraps around the production line as it's pulled out and seeded on the farm. This is a pretty slick rig, I must say. Seaweed will grow for five to seven months, typically depending on the site, ready to start harvesting, usually from mid-April up until as late as early June. Mia, yeah, boots, bo boots or shoes? Shoes? Outside of the many hats that I wear at Cascadia Seaweed, there's a constant give and take between trying to, you know, meet my professional obligations and be present for my family. Pop that on, and then we've got your coat as well. I've got young kids and their swimming lessons and dance classes and pickups and drop off from school and, and trying to pull my weight around, around the house, and, and so that doesn't all fall on Christine. <laughs> there, you, there you are. Found us. My wife, Christine, and I are celebrating our 10-year anniversary today. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be doing that with the film crew, which is, <laughs> which is, which is fantastic. Hey, Mia, hey, Mia, Mia, you're gonna fog up the lens if you keep doing that. It means your breath will make it all steamy. She's an amazing person. None of what I do would be possible without without her support and belief in the things that we're trying to do with seaweed cultivation. Nice one, Jake. The elementary school that my kids go to is, is Margaret Jenkins. My grandmother went to Margaret Jenkins. My dad and uncles all went to Margaret Jenkins. My sister and I went to Margaret Jenkins, and now we're fortunate enough to be you know, living back in the same area, and, and my kids are going to Margaret Jenkins. Do you hand up there, love? No, you, she's you good. Is up? Oh, okay. I'll back, I'll back off. You got this. Kelp is known, proven, shown to be one of the most important habitats in the ocean for creating food, refuge for marine life of all kinds. Those habitats have disappeared very rapidly up and down the coast between California and Alaska as a result of climate change. So by cultivating seaweed in a small way, we're helping restore some of that biodiversity. I might need a, a hand getting it up on the table. There's been very little research done to, to actually quantify that and, and to get put hard data to it. So we've been working on a project to, to start to do that. Yeah, so these are, these are the underwater cameras. We call them kelp cams. So you've got the camera lens in there. They're programmed to come on for five minutes an hour, every hour continuously over 18 months. So we ended up with something ridiculous around like six years of continuous footage. And so we developed a, a machine learning algorithm to be able to detect when there was something in the frame. And then they were able to, to train it to be able to identify what it, what it was seeing. But to our knowledge, it's the first time that somebody's done that, that level of instrumentation and, and data collection. Seaweed is one of those unique substances that you can, you can do just about anything with it. Obviously, seaweed can be used as food, but then there's a whole host of other things. There's the pharmaceutical industry, the nutraceutical industry. You can make fuels, you can make plastics. Our main focus is agricultural products, biostimulants for improved outcomes for land-based agriculture, as well as animal feed. Ooh, there's lots of, lots of crab traps in the water right now. Aquaculture in general is, is one real alternative and viable industry to keep these coastal communities thriving and keep people there, you know, working on the water, doing the work they want to do, and raising their families in these smaller remote communities, which are so important to kind of the, the whole culture of, of, of where we live. Oh, Jake, are you gonna, are you gonna hook the, hook the, the trap? Does it look like it? It does. Boy. Better not blow it. <laughs> There you go. Yes. Okay, pull it up. Nice job, buddy. Beyond the environmental benefits, that's you know the the socioeconomic benefits of 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 developing an industry that enables that is 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 huge. Oh my goodness! Wow! Oh, got, oh, look at this, oh, Mia. Is, we got crabs. Oh, it looks like there might be one yeah. or two in there that we can keep for dinner. There's two. That one right on top. That's a big male, right? This one looks good. Yeah, that's Oh, yeah. Just two? I mean, that's all we need. No need to keep a, a bunch of extras. We're at, at a moment in time where people need to be thinking about what am I good at and how am I applying those skills to solve some of these climate and existential problems that we're all facing. And for me, seaweed farming, seaweed cultivation, and what we can do with the seaweed ticks a lot of those boxes.